In this video help, I'm going to be covering the billing, all the blue items here. But before I do that, I want to stay, show you in the screen what we're basically showing and working with. We've covered this a couple of different times where this is the edit and input for the billing, where we're taking the client record for the booking, and we're entering individual re record items in each row that are related to billing items. Then from there, we do the payment where we collect the amount of money and put it into the billing payment area. Let's go back, back up here and look and see what we're looking at. We have the billing portal, which is a product of the billing, showing the portal for each one of the individual records in the billing portal. We have the billing list view, which shows a list view of all the records that are in the current selection for the billing portal. We have a list rate type, which will cover the list, and a long invoice. We have a billing uh, report, a payment listing based on the payment tab. We have the payment portal and the payment report. Let's go ahead and take a look at these individual screens. So let's say we're going to tra travel over from the billing tab, which is this item here. We're going to go to the portal. There's two ways to get there. You can either go through the navigation or you can click on an individual record. In this case, I'm going to click on the record and it's going to open up the billing booking information. Basically, what we're looking at here at the top of the screen is the actual summary for all the records for this particular record area that we're working in. In this case, what we're looking at is one row of the rows in the record, and we're seeing the, the summary and the amount of payments for those records that are in the current selection. So let's see, this is on September, which is our bogus date, September 17th, 2013. We did a wash and trim for a long-haired dog. We had a cost each of 14. We did 2.5, 2.5 being the hours of time. In this particular case, this is materials and labor as far as the labor itself. The subtotal of the amount is 35. We have an 11% tax rate for $3.85. So we have a line total of 38.85. Uh, then we have the uh, time that we started and the time that we finished and the billable hours. Now, in this particular case, billable hours are the sum of the time from these two fields. So we're looking at the portal again, which is this right here, the billing portal. Then we're going to look at the listing of all the current billing items. In this case, we see two for booking item number one and one for booking item number two. If we wanted to do a search, and search for a specific set of records and then use our ability to omit or show omitted, we can collect whatever data we want within this summary of this list view. The next thing we're going to be doing in that list view is we're going to go over to the uh, list rate. And with the list rate, this is something that's actually a part of the, um, the uh, let's go over here and show you, the pet services, where there's a field down here called the uh, rate. And what this is, if you have an item like a birdcage or something that you're listing out and you're going to do it at an, a rate where it's related to uh, a certain amount of time, for example, an hour, two hours, 24 hours, 12 hours, where somebody is taking something out and there's a rate that's related to it, then there's going to be a rate that goes into here. And then the rate type, which is another thing we're looking at, which is 24 hours. Uh, month, one day per week. Now, in this case, the rate type that we're looking at is this right here. You can amend this to have whatever you want to add into it by adding a new record. And this would be the bill rate of something that is going out. So this is the rate type, 24 hours, one month, one day, whatever it may be. And you can amend this to put whatever you want into it. And this is where we're editing scrollers so that we have the information we want in the scroller for the product of the information that we need. Let's go back in and look at the next item, which is the long invoice. We're going to talk about this in detail uh, in that, what does it do? Let's talk about the overview of a long invoice. What happens is in this database, you can have two types of invoices. You can have one invoice that does the 24 line type of information, or you can have all the items shown in the record and selection for whatever it might be within this area here. And the way you do that in this case, you have a desktop or laptop. The date range example is where you can put a date range in to the date range for the actual rate 
or dates that are in the, the field here. So for example, if I wanted a date paid range within a certain date range, I could start it with a greater than or equal to the date, the less than or equal to, and then only those records that meet that re required search will be put into the records down here. I can also come over and look at invoice dates and do the same kind of a thing with a rate and put a date range in there. Unfortunately, on the iOS apps and iOS devices, because they're scrollers, they don't allow you to put in a calculation that's based on this kind of a function. So what you have to do here is you'd have to have a date, but you would use something else. In this case, I'm going to use the booking ID and the booking ID or and or the name or a date for that booking for that date. For example, you can see April and September are different dates. If I wanted to see the booking for booking ID number one, which is this person, but I only wanted that specific date, then those would be the records in selection on the long invoice. If there were a great number of them, say like 20 or more, uh, it could be a lot more, uh, what would happen is that it would print all the records showing, and then it would create a new page and then create another print using the header and everything that's up at the top of the screen. So you could print as much as you want. Now on a just a straightforward edit record where there's an invoice, you cannot do that. What happens, it'll do the number of lines shown on the individual page, and that's all it will show. So you have to use a page like this, which is actually a report, believe it or not. And basically what it does is it finds the information based on what you put into it. Now, if I do a search, and I'm going to get a little oblique here and show you, I can go up here and I can search in the records up here, or I can search the individual records. Because this is a report, instead of a, uh, a list view or something similar to that or a, f a form view, I can actually search what looks like a multi-line portal, but it's not. It's actually a report. So let's go ahead and do something. For example, if I wanted to say I wanted only the items from booking ID number two, I could come over here and start a search. I could put in number two. In this case, I, in this case it's showing values. I want to put a number two in there. And I can go ahead and click that into there. And then I could say perform the, the find. And then I get number two. Now that wasn't really intended for a booking item to be used down there. It should be down here in this record area when we do the search. But I wanted to show that we could do some similar things. So let's go ahead and do a booking item number one. Even though that the only one that's showing is number two, I'm going to do a number one. And I'm going to click in there. And then I'm going to put in number one, which brings up the number one. And I could also put in a date. Now you see what it did there, as it did up here. When you're searching, it's using the number one, but it's giving you the name of the person that's related to that. So for example, if I wanted to do number one and pick the correct person for their name, I could go down here and pick num the name also. And then I could also put in a date to make it a little easier or, or better to find the information. But you have to understand when you're doing a find, you need to understand that when you're looking for a specific date range, you got to remember when you look at the current record that you want to look for, what is that date? I'm going to go ahead and complete the find, perform it, and see that I have both records in here. Well, I'm going to say I want to be kind of fancy and I want to take out the September date. And what I do is I would go ahead and click in this field or any field in this record. And then I would say omit the record. And now you'll see I have just the one record I want to use. What I'm doing is showing you the, the mixed functionality that you can use to find things. I could also do a find for the name. I could use the find for the address, for example, if I wanted to. I could use the paid date if I wanted to for a, a, something. Uh, in, in most cases, this information will provide exactly what you're looking for. But these fields were set up, the ones that are colored, for more of the searching that you're trying to find. Now none of this over here will print when you go to print it, only the data in the long invoice. If you want to return all the data in the records, which there's not an awful lot right now, you come down here and say show all records, and now you would get all the records. Now obviously this is done with finger touch if you're in an iOS device, but if you're on the desktop you're using a cursor like I am. Now this is actually on a simulator for an iPad 2, and the resolution isn't as good as if it were on a higher resolution, but it gives me the ability to keep the size of the screen relative to the actual aspect ratio of my computer and yet be able to record the size of it. Okay, so there are other things in here like I could show the opposite by saying only show the omitted ones. 
And if I had some admitted, then those would be the only ones shown. Then I can go into my print record and print whatever I wanted here. Or I can export that data as a record and exporting this data. And I'd have to select what records I wanted to export, as we showed you in an earlier video, and export that data. Now, let's go ahead and go to the next item in this area, which is the uh, billing report. And in the billing report, basically, we're showing all the billing items and the billing information similar to what we have in our records. Now, if you're in this record, what you might want to do is you may want to collect the series of records in here as a report with the included information, for example, that shows everything in a report format and does a sub-summary for the records for each individual one and then a summary for everything for this person within the record. You do that again with a search and you can come over here and you can go in here to the uh, record ID or booking ID and put in the number one and then say perform the find. And I'm not trying to get very exotic but you can see in here I had two records in the current selection which are these and I had one that was omitted. Now that would be a great deal more if you had a lot of records in your system here. And you can notice that it dropped out the headers. Well in order to re return the headers just go ahead and hit run the report and that'd be a tap or a cursor click if you're on a desktop. And now you see the record and a report with a summary and you can see there's a balance due. In this particular case it's showing a red flag for the balance due and you can see that it matches this up here that we have a record that is still not paid for the amount that is due. And in this particular case, it shows the tax, the subtotal for both records, and the line total, and then the tax on the summary and the amount. These will match now, but if I go back and I show all the records again, you'll see that it changes and now it displays all the records to include the 53, the 15, and it summarizes the records. So you can do a number of clients and have them on, say for example, you want to do for the month of whatever, say for example for April. Or I could, if you're on a desktop, you can do a date range. If you're on a uh, iOS device, it's a little less uh, capable of doing that where you can pick a date or and or you can pick something else in addition to that which will give you the information you're looking for. Uh, in this particular case, you can add the person or the ID and the ID and date which would only produce the records that were in selection for that date period. For example, there are two date ranges in here now. If I wanted, say for example, to have only April, I could put April in there and then all the records for this client for April would be shown and then I could omit or show whatever I need to for my report. And I could also get my balances due and the information that is summarized and then the grand summary down here at the bottom. Okay, let's go to the next item which is the payment report, which is very similar, only this is showing payments and where the payment is due. So it's very quickly, you can move from the actual billings to the payments and where the payments are still have, a, where they still have a balance that's outstanding. And it shows you the individual records where things are unpaid or and or paid. And again, you can do a search based on the date or and or the booking ID record or on the person which is here to and you search in this field. Headers are not allowed to search in because they're not available to you when you're in the search mode. You can also uh, go to the next record and this one is the payment portal which is the individual payment portals like we saw the billing portal. This is the individual payment portal where you're seeing the information that is in the rows of the payment tab within the billing area. You can also delete this record if you want to delete the row in that particular payment billing area. For example, if there's something was entered by air or and or you had a blank record and you wanted to pull it out of there, you can delete it by coming to this record and then returning back to it over here on the payment list view. I can pick it from the list view and go in and say I want to see that particular record and now you'll see that record in the billing list view. So you can navigate all over just by a couple of clicks or a couple of taps all over this application. In the next video help, which we're going to be covering, is the expenses and the employee information. And these are ancillary screens that are really helpful. This is overhead expenses that are not part of a billing. And this is employee, employee scheduling, and so forth, where you have a business where you want to schedule employees as well as scheduling over here for your clients. So let's go ahead and look at those in the next video. Thank you.